My name is Abby. I'm deeply passionate about all things wild and have made it my mission to explore and document many of the world's most stunning landscapes through human-powered adventure. Each quest is totally unique. Some traverse exposed moorlands and rugged mountaintops. Others whiz through bustling market towns and historical cities. They see me dive down deep amongst marine life, follow world-renowned archaeological discoveries, and travel through some of the most tranquil valleys and mystical forests accessible only on foot. My goal is always one of discovery and awareness. Getting outside is now more important than ever before, with obesity rates maintaining record highs and mental health issues affecting over one in four individuals. In building an archive of films, I aim to leave you looking for a challenge, ready to break free from the monotony of everyday life and be inspired by nature enough to want to give back. Ultimately, I want to see you don your adventure boots and spend more time in the wild for the benefit of mental and physical health. I've realised that you don't have to do something crazy or radical to change how you feel about your life. You just have to get up and get out. I face my own trials with mental ill health and chronic pain, as no doubt you'll see on my travels. But alongside building a strong support network, getting outside and taking the time to reconnect with nature has helped me move further along the road of personal discovery. So, here's me inviting you to join me on my adventures as I explore this awe-inspiring planet. There will be hardships along the way, and we're not guaranteed to succeed. But it takes a brave heart and a courageous soul to commit to the unknown. Now all you have to do is decide that you want it more than you are afraid of it. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Isle of Skye. I am in the Inner Hebrides and I'm about to set out, in fact I've already set out on my first trail ever here on the island walking the Sky Trail. 80 miles from that red phone box <laughs> down to Broadford. We essentially stick along the east coast. This is an unofficial route, it is not waymarked but I'm absolutely buzzing. I have just finished the African Tailway through the highlands essentially as a bit of a warm-up to the season and it is officially the 17th of April um, <laughs> but let's just say I've already got a sunburn <laughs> and the week ahead looks just unbelievably sunny clear skies and sunshine pretty much for the whole week I'm gonna be wild camping the majority of it and of course sharing my entire journey with you through this video in the hope that you too can come out and complete this route if ever you wish to do so. First though, I'm heading up to Rua Hunish, which is the northernmost point of the island. It's very common to see whales and all sorts of stunning wildlife from this point. So let's keep our eyes peeled and then we'll head on along the way. Leaving behind the road felt like the final rites of passage to seeing this adventure truly begin. And adding to the overall sense of magic, were the views over Duntulm Castle, built in the 15th and 16th centuries. It was in use until the 1700s and now stands ruined and exposed on the cliff tops 
and is said to be home to many ghosts, since like many fortresses, it has a pretty dark history. Is it really bad that like a kilometre in, I'm already thinking about cutting corners? It's not quite like that though. <laughs> so we're here on the cliff tops and if I just park my stick and turn around, this is the actual peninsula of Rua Hunesh. So that point there is the northernmost point of mainland sky. And the official unofficial route just so basically sticks along the cliff tops here and continues off in a that way direction. But you can add on this loop, which is like a couple of kilometers, something like that. But as you can see, <laughs> I am considerably higher up than this peninsula. And I'm just kind of going, hmm, maybe I will actually just sit here and rather than run around there and start stressing out about the time, how long it's taking me, I'll just sit here and breathe. And something else that is really inspiring me to do that is you can see essentially this big, long chain of islands here. And this is the Isles of Harris and Lewis. These mountains are an area that I have actually walked through. That's the Outer Hebrides. And last year in October, I walked the Hebridean Way, which goes from Vatisay all the way up to the butt of Lewis. It was 12 days. It was a damp and soggy and grueling trip <laughs> that pushed me to almost to breaking point. Um, it's something I never need to actually repeat ever again. But being here in the sunshine just made me wonder if the weather gods have gone, ah, maybe we'll be sunshine here on the inner Hebrides. Or maybe it's just luck, I don't really know. But uh, yeah, I wanna just take five and breathe and soak up the peace. Because if I just stop talking for a wee moment, like what, what can you hear? There's the odd skylark. You can hear the waves lapping against the shore down there. There's not much else. And this really, really, really is a truly wild place. There are seals, there are seabirds, there are whales. It's it's something that just captivates my heart and I just want to be here, not just rush around it, but arrive, get grounded and then get hiking. It was just magical parking myself high up on the cliff tops, exposed yet inspired. The area felt right on the edge in every way, a place of timeless beauty where nature rules rather than humankind. Alrighty, well, I didn't see any whales, as hard as I looked, and uh, encouraged them to come. So it's now time to press on along the way past the old Coast Guard station. This hut is now actually a bobby, and uh, you can stay here if you want to. Look at this. Mountain Bobby Association. I did it. A couple of bunks there. Nice. Looking around. Free gas, anyone? Bit of food scoff left by various folk. It's pretty standard. And then this place. <laughs> so look at this whales and dolphins. Absolutely crazy. And you've got this beautiful, beautiful shelter, beautiful view to look out over through your binoculars and see what you can see. Can't miss that now, can you? All right, here we go. Looking down over these dramatic cliffs. <laughs> It was proving difficult to make progress as I obsessively scanned the waters for signs of whales and gawped at the prowess of the cliff line, made up of spectacular columnar basalt. Everywhere I looked, rocks were frozen in jagged positions and prehistoric shapes, and I half expected a dinosaur to come yomping over the horizon. Still pretty wet underfoot, not too bad so far and certainly easy to navigate around it. But uh, you've already noticed earlier, I've got my very, very thick and clunky waterproof socks on and I hope that I can protect myself. As you can see, there is actually a 
a faint path here. In fact, it's not even that faint. This is a cross, proper path. Um, so we're just obviously keeping the sea on the left. It's on the right, something's gone wrong. <laughs> and there's this row of metal markers. So if you are here in the mist, they're actually easy to follow. So there we go. I have to say, even if you just find yourself walking along this coaster path and that's all you do. So far, yeah, quite like it. <laughs> well, <laughs> this appears to be a wee bit boggy. Oops, the daisy. Um, but someone has kindly put a plank. So I am going to walk the plank. And <laughs> I'm for the best that I'm not too heavy with my rucksack. Oh, God. Ooh. Oh, I broke a sweat with that. <laughs> that was anxiety provoking. Let's get away from here. Fast. Over the fence. And then this is it. Turning away from this little bit of coastline inland. Sort of, because the coast goes over there, but you know what I mean. The route took me past a collection of ruined buildings, their stories as buried as the stones themselves. And Dunvana Rain, a Neolithic chambered cairn sitting on the same site. Love it when a view fills up the entire lens. <laughs> Can't even capture the scale of this place. All right, almost down at the country road. And we've got a little cemetery here. Wow, what a place to be buried. This was St Mulag's church, likely dating to the early 1500s, though apparently it wasn't in use for very long. This is absolutely bonkers. This is Port Gorbleg. And there's a headland, which you can walk all the way around, but we're going obviously to the right, to the south, following the tarmac for a wee bit longer. I feel like I could just like, come here and sit on the beach in rock pool and find hermit crabs and treasure. <laughs> can you see any whales yet? Please, I'd really like to see a whale. Here we are, leaving the tarmac, following the sign, path. Probably on the seafront here now. Look at this, just how dark the rock is. Almost ominous. So striking though. Really, really beautiful. And we're just gonna hug the coastline now. That is officially a sign I've never seen before. So essentially it means go around the fence and then crack on on the other side. edge of the world and we're just gonna casually skirt around it. Big old cave down there. Man, serious I just I just have a smile on my face constantly right now. Walking along this coastline is so stunning it's really dramatic um, particularly in the ever-changing light the sun is sort of coming and going the seabirds are nesting and uh, well it's all just looking down at these coves and sea stacks and uh, kelp beds and caves. I'm just enjoying taking it all in. Honestly, I, I don't know where to look. Like inland is phenomenal and the shore and then the distant skyline is bonkers. It really is. <laughs> so this, to be honest with you, sometimes it gets proper close to the edge. As sketchy as the trail sometimes felt right on top of these crumbly cliffs, it granted the opportunity to get up close and personal with a selection of nesting gulls. Now this certainly wasn't the spectacle of spring, but it felt special nonetheless. And once again, 
the epic geology of the land stood out boldly here. Nature felt creative, resilient and awe-inspiring on so many levels. Hey, hey. Yeah, good, you? Hello. Oh, that's a big backpack. That's bigger than mine, isn't it? I don't think so. You're very pretty. You guys hiking the way? A little bit close to the edge. <laughs> good job I don't have vertigo. Look at that. Mad. Really cool, though. And this is blue. Hey, blue. <laughs> We've climbed up, now we're heading down. So, put this slightly rockier section into more rockier sections. <laughs> it's quite cool actually, being up close to the rock now. Oh god, that's a <laughs> spiky. It's very granular and chunky. So we just came down there, obviously we've been walking along these cliff tops <sighs> and that bay there just caught in the sunlight now. Every step just reveals another view of extreme beauty. Just getting closer to that ridge line with every step now. And the views down over Flodigadi and the continuation of the coast. Yes, this is real. <laughs> hmm. There are actually a myriad of trails to reach Flodigari from here, but I chose to hug the shoreline, along with the sheep, it seemed. Then, turning inland to leave the coast proper for the day, I sighted the hotel and hostel. Naturally, a stay at the hotel is a fancier affair for a hiker, but if your budget is a wee bit smaller, the hostel offers dorms and the chance to camp on site. Wherever you're staying, though, the views will be fantastic. Can't go wrong there. Ah, oh, man, we've hit the road. Quite happy to be here. Um, that was a phenomenal, phenomenal stretch of walking. Um, so now we're just gonna keep going until we find the turning off to the right. And that's gonna take us up into the hills. My goal is to pass one lock in and reach a second and stop there. So yeah, uh, good stuff, feeling good. Just uh, need to get some liquid in me ASAP. That's mildly distressing. Let's not hang around. <laughs> Just a short while. Our path is, here we go, literally here. This is gonna take us away from the road. And, uh, well, I'll show you in a second. proper wind gap here. The wind is being funneled between these high mounds either side. But we've got the first log here. We're gonna take it all in and press on to the second and we'll see how we go, whether that's a suitable wild camping spot. Look at this. Absolutely crazy. <sighs> camping here would be pretty idyllic to be honest. Obviously you've got your water supply it's flowing down there as well. And then, uh, what does this say? Woo! Birds of prey. Sea eagle, garden eagle, buzzard, and a kestrel. Fingers crossed, eh? It feels like we're in the Wild West or something. Like Texas, the desert. <laughs> it's absolutely mad, this landscape. Absolutely mad. 
here we go then lock in number two see what the camping situation's like so the space a bit further down it's all a wee bit slopey to be fair yeah the locking was better to be honest with you when uh everyone got off the bus i was like oh i bet we're all gonna make a beeline for the same lock and, and that seems to be what's happened which is fine um so i'm taking the risk now walking on i don't know how this is gonna be but risk it for a campsite <laughs> anyway also it eats in tomorrow to tomorrow's ascent so that's good so you see all around here it's very slopey very uh bumpy rocky you could probably squeeze a tent in over there and that's it so your best bet is as you're coming up that valley just fyi you know <laughs> the reason why i say i'm risking it is because once you're up on the ridge there are very very few water supplies i'm already out of water i've been a bit stupid really and not stopped and filled up but uh yeah that's why if this little lock and doesn't have any water or I can't camp there I will actually have to come back down because the next water source is multiple kilometers away and that's if I can reach it I've no idea but something like water it's best to plan on the safe side there's good steep climbing Kind of nice knowing I don't have this tomorrow morning. Huh. Only thing is that now it's quite hard going, isn't it? <laughs> so water should be somewhere around here. Not far at all now. Thankfully, hopefully. Oh, yeah, yeah. There. Gamble paid off. Water. And we're gonna camp underneath this. And the Kerrang. And the whole entire Todness Ridge. Stick marks. The campsite. Wow. Here. <laughs> 360 awesomeness. The coast that way. There's the first lock and look how high we've come. Crazy. And then uh, this epic volcanic ridge, essentially. Wow. Yeah. Relief. Ay, ay, ay. Look at this. Hello. You're going to get some water? Clearly. Oh. <laughs> this seems like the perfect opportunity to introduce my shadow on this trail. The dog, his owner, and myself were on an almost identical itinerary and we often had each other on the horizon in one way or another. Whilst we never really talked much, it was kind of cool to be traveling together, yet apart. The spirit dog, as he's now known, would often run over to say hello, and he always put a smile on my face. He was just so fluffy. <laughs> like a spirit dog, so cool. It's actually a lot deeper than it looks. Like there is some depth to that and that's why it's so dark. So anyway, let's keep cracking with this. Water. Ooh. Well, I have just made a couple of phone calls. Um, obviously I've collected my water and uh, I just absolutely am in love with this campsite. Just the views, man, the views. <laughs> um, so the sun has now dipped behind the ridge. I was watching it go, I was like, oh, it's gonna go so quickly. And the temperature has just dropped. Obviously the thing is, cause I'm sweaty, I'm covered in sun cream and bog slush. Like I'm just so sticky and disgusting. 
Um, so I might go down to the little lock and, and try and get my feet in, at least just give them a bit of a rinse on my legs. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's uh, time to start thinking about dinner and um, just breathe and chill out a little bit. I do my Patreon audio diary. Um, I'm going to try and get to bed reasonable tonight. Hopefully the wind won't be too intense uh, so I can actually just sleep um, and then get early, get going nice and early tomorrow morning to tackle the big day. Um, I'm a little apprehensive about it, uh, but I think it's going to be smashing and I can't wait to experience proper Lord of the Ring territory. So, yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> Goodbye, nice campsite. Hello, Ridge. Hello, Kerrang. Day two is underway. So, I filtered water. I have two kilograms plus 850 in my rucksack of water. It's freaking heavy. Um, but, yeah, I've drunk lots. I'm fueled. I'm ready to do this. I'm really excited about the day. I think it's going to be an awesome challenge. Um, I think the views are going to be spectacular. And more than anything, I'm really looking forward to arriving in my tent this evening and being absolutely spent, but also really fulfilled having completed the challenge. So I talk about forward thinking. <laughs> Let's get back in a moment and uh, embrace the twists and turns of the footpath. So the first part this morning basically keeps us below the ridge. Um, and then we'll head to have a car park and loop up on top. So. Best of both worlds initially. I mean, you know, I did camp under it. Just saying. <laughs> Quite cool. Me and this ridge are friends now. <laughs> it was a fantastically still morning as I made my way along the trail. Passing a handful of tents, their inhabitants still snoring away, I felt for the first time on Sky the sense of freedom that comes with multi day hiking and a great sense of excitement at the challenge ahead. I could see the trotinous ridge stretching on for miles. It both impressed and daunted me. First though, I began to make my way through the astonishing rock formations of the Kerrang, formed when a thick layer of flood basalt spread over the peninsula and destabilized the weak sedimentary rocks below. Everything about the place felt prehistoric and I gazed at my map in awe at the names of the jagged turrets and pinnacles the needle, the prison, and more. The area is known for its fossils and dinosaur footprints, dating to 160 million years ago, and a Mesolithic hunter-gatherer site from the 7th millennium BC, one of the oldest archaeological sites in Scotland, was found here too. Quite frankly, my mind was blown. Ah, a little bit of water coming down there. And what I said earlier, refill at every opportunity. So yeah, gonna down some water and refill. <laughs> this is the car park. So that's the first little leg of the day done. Very, very little leg. <laughs> and uh, as far as I can remember from looking at the map, this is really where it begins now. The undulations up into the hills, just on and on and on and on. I think it's going to be quite relentless. So, let's see how we go. Oh man, look at this. So cool. Up and up and up and up and up. And up. Did I mention up? <laughs> Looking back over the Kerrang, the car park, the coast. Ooh. Nearly there. On bound one. It's actually really nice on a psychological level to be on the ridge, you know, 
having caught the bus along its base and sort of walked towards it all of yesterday. We're now in this landscape, on this landscape. There's no other more intimate way to experience this, like maybe rock climbing, but we ain't doing that today. <laughs> yeah, it's really special. The top of one undulation. <laughs> and just don't look that way. Guys, a long freaking way down. Mate. <laughs> wow. Okay, one down done. I don't even want to know how many to go. <laughs> look at this. Slowly does it. And try and lean back to fall on your bum. <laughs> To be honest, once the first climb was behind me, the prospect of the miles ahead felt far more doable, especially since I now had the views. It felt like a model village lay below, and pools of water glistened in the ever-changing light. The geology also inspired me onwards. Rich soils and basalt features, nicknamed the Kilt Rock for its tartan-like patterns. The ridge is a national scenic area one of 40 in Scotland, defined to identify exceptional scenery and ensure its protection from development. So this is a little bit more pathless as a stretch, as the odd imprint of a footprint, but yeah, not tons to follow. The thing is, nabbing this is pretty basic. You always should just keep the ridge to the left. Um, it's more just a case of not getting too far away from it or unnecessarily huggling, hug, huggling? hugging the edge to add to your workload. So yeah, let's just say it's not matching the GPX right now, but it doesn't matter. So so far looking back, we've walked all the way from around the corner, um, along the base of this one, up and over this one, down to here, and then we're gonna get up this one next. That's so brutal. <laughs> I don't know if this counts as a pee. If it does, that's my rest. I'll be honest, it didn't count about two minutes ago. <laughs> Maybe at the top of this one anyway. There's a can on this one. Oh, just wanna get there. That is absolutely unbelievable. And there's the ridge ahead. There we go. 611. Ugh. Looking at the profile of the map, the next leg, doesn't look anywhere near as steep until a bit further on. Come to that later. It would have been criminal to not stop here and enjoy the views on Bien Edra. So, since I'm trying to keep my records clean, I had no choice but to pause. I made a few friends whilst I scoffed a waffle too, which was nice. However, with the pressure of a long way to go, yes, that is a technical term, I didn't stop for too long and was soon back on my feet, heading south. You know what else is epic about this linear journey? Is ahead now, you can just see the coolant, the beginning of them. This epic range of mountains that for a long time in history remained unascended. Now obviously they are, but they are completely spectacular. And later on in our journey, we'll be skirting around the edge of those. Look at it, it just so sort of drops off. 
All right, we're gonna take this super steady. God, it's so steep. And then <laughs> we've got to get all down and all the way back up again. <sighs> I was trying to look at where the path goes. I can't quite work it out. I think it goes to that point and then up across. But uh, yeah, ultimately we're going up there anyway. Over the fence. What use this fence is, I'm not sure. Whew. Whoop. Now looking back on where we just were, I just stood there eating my flapjack <laughs> and now we're on that path and now the path is gone so up it is then well i just looked at my gps this is actually the edge so yeah uh, i think it is a little tricky navigating if you can't see well now that we made it back to the path <laughs> can see this is our penultimate lump and down to this saddle there's a waterfall there we'll talk about that later and then up to the store last big one for the day the store was my ultimate goal for the day sitting at 674 meters above sea level the 73rd highest peak in the british isles and proudly so first though i had to traverse some boggier grounds it's worth me mentioning that there were in fact a few pools of peaty water on the ridgeline, usable in the event of a hydration emergency. Underfoot conditions aside, however, and things were getting very real on the view front. Mountains, coastline, rivers, wildness in every direction. I mean, that really is an imposing final ascent. Got to get all the way down to this call and then across and up. Cheese. <laughs> the fact that I have to strain my neck to look up is uh, <laughs> a bit gulp worthy. <laughs> Can I just say, I absolutely love this. Just makes me so happy. Water source alongside and the growing view behind. Speaking of water sources, if you don't want to drink stale bog water, then this saddle hosted the only flowing water on the entire day's walk. Come on, not far to go now. Keeping it strong. Whew. it is oh my gosh yes <sighs> wow here we go the store Whoo! seven one nine meters above sea level oh the highest point on the Tetherness ridge you can see all the back all the way back from where I've traveled Oh my goodness me. God, the guidebook calls today tough. I would agree. <laughs> Woo! Yes. It's just impossible to take in this landscape. Every direction is just something that makes your jaw drop. But definitely my favorite thing is A, being able to see poetry as tomorrow's journey's end. And then on into the Coolins, we've really got a very good view now of those mountains and that mountain range. And that essentially is where our onward journey goes. So it's nice being able to sort of look down the track, if you know what I mean. Wave goodbye to the trig point. Let's begin our descent back down. Earlier I mentioned you have to be quite careful here on the store because, well essentially there's a big drop off right here. Big crags, big cliffs. So I basically have done a V to get up to the top and now the other side of the V to get back down. Um, rejoining the trail and on along the way. 
I just can't believe we've traveled all the way from there along up and down up and down up and down to get to here it's it just looks so so far <laughs> It's actually only really been this final stretch on the store that there hasn't really been any navigationally helpful paths. And uh, here, it's quite disorientating because there's like rubbly rocks or piles of rocks that look like they're footpath heading off. It's just the edge. <laughs> so uh, yeah, hopefully we'll pick something up more obvious heading down in there. Uh, not freefall. That would be bad. Yeah, there we go down there it's along this ridge now cool that was uh interesting <laughs> here we are on the path actually i'm a little bit nervous about this next leg not for any reason except the people so i'm gonna basically be camping in a tourist attraction <laughs> um so the wee lock in i want to stop at is literally right next to the old man's store i can see loads of people on a mound right now probably looking out across it so see what it's like when i get there but I don't plan on joining the circus today. There's the show up there. God, I can't believe I'm gonna like walk in front of all of them and put my tent up. <laughs> it's a bit awkward. Let's see, let's see. Anyway, 100 meters on. And that, my friends, is the old man of store. Big old needle. Good stuff. That's a real icon of this place. And can just about see the lock and I want to camp at as well down there. The area below the store, where I was now walking, is known as the Sanctuary, home to a number of weirdly shaped rock pinnacles, which are the remnants of ancient landslips. It was easy to see why the area was so popular. And at 55 metres high, the old man of store is all that remains of a 2,800 million year old volcanic plug. Yes, you heard that date right. After a bit of a look around, I began to make my way down to the wee lochen. Jeez, I do feel bad. I'm all about like protecting the environment and all that. And now I'm just like, cool, off the trail, let's go. <laughs> Here's my wee lock in though. So let's try and find somewhere that's potentially flattish to camp. And maybe a little bit tucked away from the crowds right up there. <laughs> oh, what about down there? Well, I mean, it's not a bad spot. So you've got the old man of store right up here. I'm thinking about camping here. Feels a little bit too good to be true, to be honest. But I think it is true. I got her first and I got the spot. Bish bash bush. Oh. Cool, let's set up camp. One of the hikers who has the big white dog, he's just come across, I thought he would. It's been again a bit of a race to where we're we gonna pitch up. Looks like he might be going up over there. Can you see the dog? <laughs> the spirit wolf. Um, I have to say, I'm absolutely chuffed with the day. Just felt really strong. Though first to say, it definitely knocked me. I was like, oh geez, if this is what the whole thing's like, I'm screwed. Um, but yeah, it was fine and we survived and I really, really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as much as I thought I would and it's just made me so happy. Um, so yeah, pitched up. There are midges here, which is a bit of a shame. It's not too many. Um, but yeah, I think it's obviously to be expected when you're so close to water, but it's just going to make life that bit easier. And then tomorrow it's on to Port Tree. So here I am pitched underneath the old man of store, looking out over the Isles of Rasse and the islands and the sea and the locks and everything else. <sighs> and this is sky in the sunshine. I don't know if there's anywhere better right now. I am truly, truly content. <laughs> ha, and I'm in a tent. Content, intent. <laughs> that was terrible. Right, let's get unpacked. It was actually really nice to have the spirit dog as my neighbor for the night. And after filtering some water, 
I set about winding down for the day. It's good to be on the move. Day three is officially begun. So I'm heading down to the store car park now. And then, uh, well, I'm hoping I can finally dump some of my rubbish in a bin. Um, resupply and water. Yeah, and then it's uh, on to Port Tree. Apparently we've got some very boggy walking today um, across the moors. The road runs around one side of the lock and we're basically going around the other. So let's see how we get on with that today. Dropping down to the car park, I ticked off each task on my to-do list and then picked up the A835 southwards until my trail appeared on the left. The sun was shining bright as I passed Loch Lethen and, quite frankly, life could not have felt any better. Just uh, walking alongside the power plant that was the first one here on the island to provide electricity in 1950. Can't quite get my head around that. We're just following this track and hopefully pretty soon heading off into pathless territory but in the direction of Port Tree. That's the hopeful bit. <laughs> Basically, don't go that way. <laughs> the power plant overlooked Biarheg Bay, a dramatic place famous for its fossils, like belantonites and ammonites. Alrighty, so this looks to be like a path. I'm going to follow it <laughs> at the risk of my own survival. It's like yesterday all over again, <laughs> down and up. But I think I'll go up that little saddle. Ultimate de destination on top of there. Gosh, look at that. Just climbed up onto this mound. Wow, it's breathtaking. It's like being in paradise. Wow. White tailed eagle. Quite far away, but it's just circling on the thermals. Wow. Hey, big birds. What a treat. Despite this being the wettest and most indistinct stretch of walking so far, it didn't take long before the old man of store was well and truly left behind and the bay retreated onto the horizon. Most bike, it seems, come over the top. I was just wondering if I was going to be able to join that very faint footpath. And the answer, my friends, is yes. That... <laughs> was a good route, just skirting around there and handrailing those rocks. Bish bash bosh. Now we've just got to get up there. Starting to tackle this ascent now. Is that ideal? Well, this imposing peak is called Fjarnin, Fjar, Fjarjan, Fjarjan, Fjarjan? I'm, I'm working on my Gaelic pronunciation, also butchering it. Regardless, we're going up there now, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited because this is a sort of a breakdown third of the day, mentally anyway. I don't know about distance, so let's do it. Gonna be good. 
fiarni yan fiarin yan Oh, did you look at that? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so it's a happy moment on the trail when I get to eat a waffle. I love waffles sugar waffles just like this Woo -hoo! <laughs> it's about five miles now to go to Portree feeling pretty happy I'm loving this I mean how can you not look at that like what is, what, where am I? <laughs> Highest point for the day. Here we go. Highest point for the day. 392 meters above sea level. And the spectacular cliff with a trig. Does it get any better than this? I think not. <laughs> Yes. From the cliff tops to the vibrant blue waters, distant peaks and nearby sheep, everything about this path felt perfect. And that down there is Port Tree Bay. Very, very scenic in the sunlight. Quite a long descent down this one is. Here goody, where goody. What immediately caught my attention as I made my way down to the bay were the rings of netting. These were salmon farms. Skye is well known for its salmon, but unfortunately in recent years there has been a myriad of issues, both ethical and environmental. Lice infestation, escapes, diseased fish and waste blanketing the seabed have all had an impact on the industry. Anyway, fishy facts aside, I was now into single figures of the miles left for my day's walking. Down to Portree! <laughs> this is so, so lovely. I'm just having a really leisurely walk into Portree. I actually just stopped and sat at the bay for a while. Just breathed it all in, the peace, the quiet, the solitude. It's so good. But now we're gonna head into the hustle and bustle of Portree, the capital of Skye. <sighs> Colorful place. Let's go take a closer look. And that is where my day is going to end. So uh, I'm not sure where I'll see you again next, but it'll be somewhere. <laughs> on sky. <laughs> I chose to really take my time here as the area is well known for sightings of otters, seals, dolphins and seabirds. Though all I spotted were some hermit crabs, lots of kelp and some lovely dog violets and celandines growing beside the path. Oh, there was a heron stalking in the shallows too. Before long though, I found myself on the grassy outskirts of Portree and the smell of fish and chips filled the air. Portree was created as a fishing village at the beginning of the 19th century by the then Lord MacDonald and today is still renowned for the industry. Considered among the 20 most beautiful villages in the UK and Ireland, Portree is a popular place for visitors to Skye with cafes, shops, a tourist information centre and more. There are also an abundance of hotels and two youth hostels as well. Welcome back folks. So I have arrived on the campsite. Yes, I'm going to shower today. Um, picked up my van, unfortunately they can't really do anything with it. Um, but I've asked the campsite that I'm here now at, 
English, um, and I can leave it here, which is no problem. It is 21 degrees. I have the thermometer now. 21 degrees. That's why I feel quite hot. Anyway, I'm just trying to get my head around my resupply. That's the main reason why I've come back to the van. And here it is. <laughs> Ta-da! Explosion of food. <laughs> So we've got day one, two, three, four, which is a bit cheeky given the fact that I was going to do it in three days now, but you know, whatever. Tea and coffee, snacks, <laughs> um, and I'm actually just being super nice to myself and giving myself breakfast um, on every trip at the moment. These are my tent meals, uh, one of my favourite brands um, that I do actually work with. Uh, so these are their main meals, 500 calories, just the reason why I love them is look at that, just that whole Outman's, it's super good and nutritious. Um, so yeah, just uh, going to be good really, get some good food in me and then I've got snackage. So yeah, it's going to weigh quite a bit, but thankfully that will be gone by the end of day one and um, the rest won't last too much longer, let's be completely honest. <laughs> Morning, morning! Welcome back to Port Tree. So I've left the van at campsite and walking through the town and pressing on into day four of the Sky Trail. I'm absolutely pumped for this. Um, so the initial leg is 12 miles to Sligachen and then, well basically I just see where I go from there. That's irrelevant, that's in the future. Um, right now in the present, I feel very overwhelmed by the sound of vehicles whizzing past my ears. Um, so I'll be quite glad to get off this main road. So there should be a footpath somewhere here on the left. Hopefully. <laughs> Is that us? This could be us. Let's give it a shot. Seems like people have gone this way. Cool, happy days. Looks like we've uh, pulled out onto the shoreline, which is, or was, the goal. I had been really looking forward to this small stretch of walking alongside the tidal salt marsh, as it is renowned for its bird life. Sadly, I had accidentally left my binoculars in my van, but still enjoyed spotting a variety of species nonetheless. Areas such as these are essential for an abundance of wildlife, and for humans, they can reduce coastal erosion, stabilize shorelines, protect against storm surges, and support species that are critical to recreational and commercial fishing, hunting, birding, and other activities. It's actually quite high tide right now, so it's making this fractionally more difficult to navigate through that and this path seems to be used more by animals than people. Um, there's quite a bit of evidence of otters coming onto the shore and opening shells. Oh god yeah, look at that look. You shall not pass. Um, um. <laughs> ow, ow. I'm optimistic I can get through. Just a bit of uh, navigating <laughs> around rocks and all that. Guys, proper, uh, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> Wilderness explorer. Oh. Woo. <laughs> ah, well, garlic. Hello. Sorry to squish you. My guidebook said to come this way. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Ah, pass. <laughs> yeah, is it a high tide today? Like a high, high tide? I've absolutely no idea. Quite possibly. Because it says in my book that this is only impassable at the highest of high tides. Super nice though. Much better than the road. We have a clump hopping scenario. So the water is eroded away. It's just a case of hop, 
Hop. Hop. <laughs> Swap legs. Hop. <laughs> and we made it. So far. <laughs> I feel like I have no idea about the terrain I'm walking on. It's so bouncy and squishy and obviously wet. <laughs> I mean, look at this. this is, I'm just walking on estuary grass. <laughs> it's a little disconcerting. The only like, counselling force I have in this is that there is actually a footpath. For the sky trail, there is a footpath. Look at this. You see this? Bam. <laughs> Clearly it lives underwater half its time. But yeah, go. I wouldn't like to do this in summer. The gorse is gorgeous, but very sharp. I'm just about to squeeze through. <laughs> Love an adventure. Ow. Ow. Oh, God. Ow. Oh, <laughs> no. Okay, here we go. I can go with the body, but the head is not acceptable. Oh, what? Huh? How am I supposed to do this? Like a bull in a china shop. To fish the permission to go for it. No pain, no gain, no pain, no gain. I love nature. Ow. Nature's great. Ooh. Oh, there's another path. Of course there's another fucking path. Ah. <laughs> Okie dokie. <sighs> Smile and wave, boys. <laughs> that happened. Ow. We made it! <laughs> Wasn't sure I was gonna come out of there alive, unskewered. Um, and now we have the Varagil River crossing over and then there's tarmac for a bit. Oh, I feel like a freaking barbecue human. Well, this is kind of it now for a few miles. Just following this lane, nice and steady walking through open country. So I'm actually just gonna keep my mouth shut, see if we can see any wildlife with any luck. Might be a few deer about. But yeah, on we go towards the Braes. That's the next point of interest. Now, I know many folks are not a fan of tarmac walking, but this stretch through the Braes felt like a behind the scenes sneak peek of life on Sky. The area is pretty sheltered when compared to the rest of the island and boasted a curious selection of houses of all different sizes. And for the first time, there was livestock, cattle, sheep, goats and pigs roaming around the land and the shoreline. There was wildlife too, and I'm pretty sure I had my first otter sighting, though it was rather distant, swimming out to an island. The area also has a rich history, as marked by a cairn, where, nearby, on the 19th of April, 1882, ended the battle fought by the people of the Braes on behalf of local crofters. In addition to all of this going on, I can look across the narrows of Rasse to Rasse Island, served by a ferry that departs from Sconster. Beautiful daffodils. Oh my goodness, look at that. Wow, there's a cove and everything here. Gosh, that is spectacular. Talking to various folk who have done this trail or are doing this trail, it seems to be quite common to get the bus from Port Three to Slagachen but that means you bypass this stretch and particularly in this weather this stretch is so beautiful it's really peaceful i feel like you're actually getting amongst the people who live on the island year round and also <laughs> if the weather's been crap it's a nice stretch of non-bog walking so yeah overall i'm enjoying this casually a goat right there hi goat you look confused. Me too. Don't worry about it. That is such an impressive view. Hang on a minute. This red phone box has books in it. Oh yeah. Let's see if there's any we can lug with us on our hike. Uh. 
Can you see anything? What is this? Fifty Shades of Hill Walking. <laughs> This is a really interesting spot, actually. I mean, we've walked for miles and miles and miles to get here, and that is no exaggeration, many miles. You feel like you're absolutely in the middle of nowhere. And then you're here and you look across the lock and that's the main road to Broadford. If we follow that, we're really not that far from Broadford. But of course, we are gonna take the mountainous routes around the base of the Coolins. And uh, let's just say it's not quite as efficient as the road. But still, it's uh, it's just really funny because the other side of the lock is this civilization, and yet here you just feel like you've stepped back in time. It's still, it's peaceful, it's magical. <laughs> okay, I'm hoping we can get a clearer view a bit further on. But there's some little islands there, and they are covered in seals. <laughs> My lens might not be quite long enough, but. You'll be able to get the gist of it. Seals! Sorry. <laughs> yep, seals. I was beyond excited, and both common and grey seals are often seen in the bays and sea locks around the Isle of Skye and Rasse. Naturally, I was keen to get a closer look. So I've just come down to the beach. I'm trying to be really quiet and not get too close, but I really wanted to see the seals. Um, I just, I can't believe that they're there. And I've decided I'm gonna sit here and have lunch and watch the seals. So I'll give myself 10 minutes. It is 10 past 12. Let's have a sandwich with the seals. <laughs> lunch with the seals. Look what I said. That's good right now, you know? In the sun, with the seals, and a halloumi sandwich. Hashtag happy. <laughs> As I sat scoffing my sandwich, I enjoyed watching the ferry manoeuvre into Sconster, having already been to Rasse as I walked on by. And, of course, the seals gave me immense joy. Overall, I felt pretty harmonised. Oh, I have a sad face on. I don't want to leave the beach. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> oh, I have to walk. I could have sat there for the rest of the day. Just camped here, there's water. I'd be fine. Just watch the seals. Oh. Let's go into the mountains if we must. And voila, Slagakin 3.2. Bye, seals. I miss you already. Look at that. Beautiful, hey? So we're gonna skirt around, all the way around, all the way around. Slagaking's right there at the end of the lock. Right, I'm gonna take a risk. Um, the path goes up here, but the tide is out. And I kinda wanna go along the beach, see if I can find anything and then climb back up. Uh, so fingers crossed that works. Let's go down. Hopefully I can get down as well. Yeah, I can make that work. Sorry, plants. Ow, ow, ow. Easy. Obviously the seaweed's gonna be quite slippery, but I think I can work with that. Bish bash bosh. I'm gonna walk along the shore. That's a bit nice. <laughs> It's part of an anemone. Oh my gosh. That is a really cool find. Oh, I wouldn't mind finding a whole one, please, thanks. <laughs> it's probably only here though, because it's been eaten. This is the thing with beach combing, is it takes forever. The progress is slow, people. <laughs> Looking out, I could definitely continue in this fashion along the beach all the way to the salt marshes. But I think I'm just gonna hop this burn, head up here, and the path is just going along the ridge. So that's my plan for now. That is a beautiful, beautiful pool. <laughs> 
so tempting to sit in that. I feel like I've wasted enough time today though. Well, not wasted, whittled away. <sighs> Whittling away time is good, but not good for progress. <laughs> Let's go. Here's the path. It was never too far away, really. <laughs> Easy. Now, tick check. <laughs> be gone, wee beasties. Oh crap, I scared them. Oh, sorry guys. Well, that's me having got close to seals, but I've accidentally scared them. Oh, I feel so bad. They're just like chilling in the sunshine and then I just walked past. I just heard a and then it was like stampeding for the water. Oh. Gutted. As we've seen with the seals, this place really is a bit of a mecca for wildlife um, and mud apparently. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, so when the tide goes out, you've got this estuary-like space full of little fish and crabs and then the wading birds can come and find their food. Things like herons and oyster catchers are all around. There's so much life. It's, uh, it's really, really hard to keep moving and take it all in. I'm, I, I'm full to the brim. I'm so happy. Like seeing the seals and the herons and the, the birds and just keeping my eyes on the skies for eagles. Like this is, this is, <laughs> I feel like I'm born to do this, like, how can you not love this? I'm just, I'm so fulfilled and content right now. Meanwhile, this looks like a cupboard to Narnia. Or are we in Narnia? And this goes back to the house. <laughs> it's so random. But it's not, because there's a pylon just over the hill. <laughs> I'm grateful this is, uh, this is <laughs> not crazy full. I'm um, here. That looks treacherous, I'm not going to do that. Let's just go this way. Okay, this is Slagakin campsite. So this is where I was originally going to end my day. Um, as you know, I'm not now. Time is 2.32. God. If I actually just kept walking, I could have got here at like 12. <sighs> right, and now we're aiming for the inn. Although a rather exposed spot, if the weather was bad, the campsite seemed rather idyllic in the sunshine, with epic views over Loch Slagachan and towards the Coolins. Across the busy road was the Slagachan Hotel, dating to 1930. Here, there's a microbrewery, restaurants, and little museum. I popped in for a sugar and hydration hit, as the heat of the day was slowly starting to wear me down. Clearly, I wasn't the only hiker with this idea. Now it's time to press on into the next day's journey. So we're actually going into Glen Sligachen, but it's really not a word that rolls off the tongue, is it? Um, and we're gonna cross over one of Thomas Telford's ridges in order to do that. So let's do it. So this stone one is obviously the old one. And then we've got the new modern one, which is far less beautiful. <laughs> Crossing over the bridge and river was thrilling, as it hosts a fantastic story about Skahak, a legendary female warrior. It's a story well worth reading into, involving great tradition, fairies, and peace gifted by the magic of the waters. Just before the glen, the trail passed the Collie and Kenzie statue, proudly surveying the lands. These two friends together mapped and named many of the Kulin Peaks. Can't really go wrong with this, can you? <laughs> Look at this. To the left of the trail were iconic peaks like Masco and Rude Stack with Blabiernen peeking out as I moved ever closer. Each Munro took on a totally different shape, with Knight's Peak on the right of the trail appearing to be the most mysterious.
You know how earlier in this hike I said, oh, the trail is great when you can't fit or, you know, when the view fills the screen. And now the view doesn't fit in the screen because it's too big and vast and epic. We are making good progress along the glen. This path is so good. Just uh, makes it so much more enjoyable. You're not bog hopping the whole time. Jeez, look at the size of these boulders that have been brought down. Whew. Wow, this is a beautiful spot. So tempting to just uh, stop and take my shoes off for a bit. But I'm actually now being quite intentional with covering distance. I think I'm going to try and get right through the glen to the bay on the other side. Apparently it's a good otter spot. And if I could spot an otter, I feel like my life would be made. <laughs> feels like we're finally leaving behind the mountains that we've been walking into all of this time. Like these peaks here, they've been our horizon for four days, three and a half days at least. And uh, now we've <laughs> gone past them, we're in them and hoping to pop out the other side a bit later on. Crazy really. But I can tell you one thing, having never been to the Coolins before, I really really do quite love them. <laughs> they are a spectacular bunch of mountains. Everything about Glen Slegachen was majestic. And now alongside Anne Athain, Blaf Bjernen stood proud, shadowing the trail at 928 metres above sea level. Regarded as an outlier from the Black Coolin range, this Munro is mainly comprised of Gabbro, a grippy, coarse, igneous rock that looked gnarly and jagged from the trail below. Take a look at this. This is a riverbed. Go, go, go. Sensory overload, that got me completely out of nowhere. This jet, that was so loud. It just bounced off the walls of the mountains. Oh. All right, focus on what you love. High hills. Um, this is a riverbed, <laughs> except as you can see, it's really dried out. Ah, oh, God, sorry, lost the mojo for that. Let's go. I would not be surprised if a bear was just lounging around on the shores of this lock. I feel... I feel really remote, actually. Very alone here. Am I scared? Maybe I am a bit scared. People ask me a lot when they meet me on the trail. Like, are you hiking alone? Oh yeah. Are you scared? No. <laughs> I'm not scared. I get scared in my tent, but that's my head. And it's nothing to do with, well, it is a bit to do with where I am, but I get it at home. I can get that anywhere. And now, with nothing and no one? I think I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a little bit of fear inside of me, actually. But I don't know if that's to do with where I am or whether it's to do with the time of day, knowing that the camp is coming up knowing that I'm still a little indecisive as to when I'm actually going to stop, knowing that I can just keep walking and walking and walking and walking, and I don't actually have to face the camping problem. <laughs> you see, the sun is very quickly going to dip behind that. I'm going to be in the shade. It's coming. It's going to catch me. 
and then we just keep going. Look at these rocks. <laughs> Amazing. And here is the end of the lock. And our path is gonna basically go over the top here or through this saddle and down to the bay on the other side. About one and a half kilometers to go. It's just gone half six. I can't believe how quick I've moved through there actually. And whilst filming. <laughs> Not too bad at all. And with that, we're back into the sunshine again. Woohoo! <laughs> Hello, Shadow. <laughs> All right, let's do it. There it is. The bay. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't realize there was a house there. Cool. <laughs> that is mad, actually. We've put in at least 20 miles today. I'm feeling all right for it. I think just the majesty of that valley, Glen. <laughs> um, it was so easy just to walk and the quality of the trail, particularly because it's been dry. <sighs> and then this morning with the seals, <laughs> I still can't go over that. <laughs> what a fantastic, fantastic day. Proper like trail highlight, like in overall times. Oh, also, I think I'm a bit knackered. <laughs> I feel all right in my body, but I think psychologically I'm ready for a bit of a break. So let's get down to the bay and see if we can uh, find somewhere to pitch up. Kamasunari Bay is well known for its beauty. And as it turns out, it's home to a private house, which seemed empty. I won't deny that this took me by surprise and spooked me a little bit. Wow, we made it. <laughs> we made it to the bay. So these are the mountains we have traveled through all the way to the bay. So I'm gonna stick on this side of the alt. So that's my drinking water. Now let's see if we can find a house for the night. Whoa, that is a lot of plastic. Look at this, folks. We're completely in the middle of nowhere and this place is trashed. How? Huh? What? That is heartbreaking. It makes me feel sick. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Look at this. This whole beach is just plastic. I've never seen anywhere so littered in my life. I think this is just the sad truth of the world that we live in now. Is it is just so scarred by us as humans and our cheap excuses to continue in our ways. And that is what they are, is cheap excuses. It doesn't have to be, we don't have to use plastic. We don't have to have single use plastics. We can recycle, we can remold. We're not a stupid species. To litter this place like this, this being one island in the whole freaking world, like. What is there to say? I think the scenery speaks for itself. All right, so with all of that in mind, I'm gonna try and find somewhere to camp. I might even just go up there. I know we're near the water, but I don't really understand. I think this is all chucked up by storms, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. It's a bit wet. 
<laughs> wetter than I'd like actually. Um, is there water at the body map? Yes. Maybe I'll go to the body. <laughs> that might be a good solution actually. And then I just camp nearby. There's water there. Oh god, I'm so indecisive. See, this is dry. I could just camp here. That's really not dry. I won't camp here. Oh, I don't like this. Don't like this at all. <laughs> it's not my strong point. <laughs> Every day, bro. Every day. Some rather fine falls here. See that. I feel like I'm really having an adventure today. <laughs> and I am gonna go somewhere here, I think. I can get the water, it's flat, and it's reasonably dry. Perfect. Well, not quite. Perfect would not be all this drama right now, but this'll do. <laughs> and I just won't look that way at the house when it gets dark. Oh, for frick's sake, come on. Courage, dear heart. This is a good space. This is a good space. It's got everything that I need. There's water. It is a nice flat patch. I am safe. I'm going to be okay. There's a house. There's a body. I hate the dark, but I can do it. The sound of the water is going to be a lot. I just need to get in my tent. Like, I'm probably almost overtired, and that's not helping either. I can't think straight. Let's just commit, you know. I made a decision. It's a good decision. I'm gonna camp here. I won't look that way. The house, empty or otherwise, was really bothering me. But I knew my feeling of unease wasn't founded on facts. So set out to pitch up my tent and breathe deep through the anxiety. Well, pitched up. That's something anyway. Now I'm going to go and get water. I'm just coming back because I need a towel because I'm going to wash my feet as well. In there. Oh. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> oh, washed. <laughs> God, everything is a difficult decision right now. That's how I know I've got tired. <laughs> That'll do. The sunset has to be enjoyed. Who can just wait a minute? Look at that. So here at the bay, we're looking out over the small isles. So there's Yeg and Rum right now on the horizon. It's just stunning, it really is. That's just as I was having a little wash there, I was just thinking about this feeling scared thing. And actually I feel like I've had a little bit of a, just awareness awakening today just you know I am scared <laughs> I do have times where I'm really scared particularly while camping like while camping has been very very hard for me in the past it still is very hard there's a reason why I push to do it and that's just something about my personality is when I'm scared of something like I push through and there's definitely a time for backing off and there's definitely a time for digging in deep and that's why just there I was like hang on a minute I think this is a time for digging in deep um, there is no logic to the fear of my head <laughs> and nothing is going to happen to me out here it's purely in my imagination and but that doesn't have to happen it doesn't have to happen if i can just tell myself like i'm in control and like i have camped wild camped for years and years now and it still is really hard and like i said earlier I, th this fear happens at home it's it's not just about wild camping like i can be at home and it can get triggered i can be with someone and it can get triggered um i'm scared of the head being triggered <laughs> If that makes sense. I don't know, but it's just, yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> but I do it anyway. And I think that's sort of my real realization for the day is like, I like a challenge, um, but challenges are completely subjective. And for me, it's a challenge to pitch up in this beautiful, beautiful spot. You just have to be brave. Like, I really like that C.S. Lewis quote, take courage, dear heart. It really means a lot to me, you know? It is about finding courage. We can't be courageous if we're not scared. 
and tonight I'm being courageous. <sighs> I've covered some good miles today and I just want to rest in the pride of my body being able to do this because it is amazing and that needs to be celebrated. Fear can't have the steering wheel all the time. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Amazingness is driving right now. It's a good ride. It's a good ride. Good morning. I've just come back down onto the beach. I woke up really early. I actually had a good night's sleep. Um, so I've decided we'll, we'll come and have a proper little look. Um, see what plastic really is about and see what the story of this beach is. Um, I have to say, I feel like I've woken up with a bit of a fire in my belly just seeing this around me. It makes me want to do something. And, you know, I know with my platform, I try to raise awareness and, and talk about difficult issues where I can um, but talking isn't enough like it's action that's required <laughs> um, and without getting too deep in philosophical for this time in the morning you know it, it it's getting too late to act and I think sure we can always look up for a top-down approach but it's bottom-up that's where our power is our power is to vote with our note, it's to choose to buy something or not because of where the plastic or the materials come from or where the ingredients come from and the story it's got to tell, has it got palm oil in, you know, is that cotton organic and on and on and on it goes and I think it can definitely become a bit of a headache, <laughs> it can become a bit of a heartache but it matters and if we don't make those decisions and those sacrifices then Every single piece of plastic, every wrapper, everything that we have ever bought and disposed of is still here and will be here for thousands and thousands of years, long after we have gone. And I find that such a disheartening thing. And when I'm in a supermarket or in a shop, it really does make me think, <laughs> do I really need that product? Do I really need that packet of grapes, for example? You know, I love buying grapes. <laughs> ah, they're from um, South Africa and they're in non-recyclable plastic. Well. Do you know what? I can make that sacrifice because I'm not going to die if I don't eat those grapes. <laughs> and I think these are the things that, you know, we, we have to start thinking about. And, you know, my partner and I talk about how consciousness is painful. Like once you start seeing things and thinking outside of your own selfish existence, it becomes really hard because, you know, you have to let go of certain things and ways and habits. But the reward is that maybe if we all did that, we could come to a beach like this and actually just enjoy nature. There are so many recognisable items here, you know, from bicycle pedals to plastic bottles to single-use coffee uh, things, pods, whatever they call them. There's shoe soles, there's hats, there's crates. It, it is endless. And I think that's the realisation is that, you know, every single single-use yogurt shop we have, every plastic bottle we buy, every single thing that we throw away has to go somewhere. Where is it going to end up? Well, we'd like to just pass on that responsibility to recycling companies, but we have a responsibility and we can take that responsibility if we're willing to put in the effort. And I think that is the very simple truth about this is we're just not willing to put in the effort. Most people are just not willing to put in the effort. If we love nature, we have to protect nature. If we want to get out into nature, we have a right and a responsibility to be stewards and try to leave the world in a little bit of a better place than we would otherwise be doing if we weren't thinking and worrying about it at all. Didn't see any otters, but I did hear otters last night. I was not going to get out of my bed. I was knackered. Now think about it, otters, seals, seabirds roaming around on this beach having their dinner amongst our crap. And it's like, why should it be like that? It doesn't have to be like that. And if you have any kind of a heart, you'll look at this and you'll feel the pain that I'm feeling. It's sad, it's really sad. Anyway, this is day five on the Sky Trail. The side of sky that most people don't get to see. It's covered in trash. 
At this point, I just want to mention that later in the day, I spoke to a lovely local who said that a few times a year, the community make their way down to the bay for a big old beach clean, removing sacks of rubbish by boat. Regardless, I couldn't deny that I was left feeling a little hopeless, especially since most of the identifiable products were from Scandinavian shores carried by currents. Leaving the bay behind, I passed by a body where several other hikers had stayed overnight. Unfortunately, it had become a bit of a dumping ground for collected trash, so I didn't bother looking inside. From the body, the trail began to climb up to the cliffs. It was a thin, eroded path, but easy to follow, gaining height quickly and offering views both down over yet more littered beaches and back to the bay. This is mildly claustrophobic. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, come on. <laughs> Help! Made it through the tunnel of doom. The path gets very close to the edge in some places. You just kind of hope this ain't the day that it crumbles. <laughs> also in places very tight between the trees and then underfoot is also a little bit scrambly so you know lots to concentrate on <laughs> yeah that makes life easy doesn't it jeez <laughs> let me go over this one never mind the gigantic cliff drop Mm. Oh. Better to fall into the cliff, get stabbed by the trees, and continue onwards. Ah, oh, that's better. Get out of this rubbish. Trees are great until they're trying to push you off a cliff. <laughs> well, I would describe that stretch back there as treacherous and heart rate raising. <laughs> uh, but this stretch here, we've now gone into the sun. We've come into the sun. And look at that. Crystal clear waters, but still loads of plastic around. God, emotional roller coaster this is. God, this would have been a good place to camp. It would have been quite okay with that. Funnily enough, my hiking friend and his spirit dog had overnighted in this idyllic bay, and I was greeted with waggly tails and lots of licks. By the dog, of course, and not the human. You're not so white anymore. Very, very dramatic landscape. Once again, the rocks sloping down into the sea. Oop, let me drop my stick. Yeah, it is a long way down. Very, very precarious in places. I think this is the first stretch I wouldn't do if it was wet weather. It's just so slippy <laughs> and it's bone dry pretty much. Whoa. How was my dodgy ankle? <laughs> just caught that within comfort range. Whew. I just gave way. <laughs> no bother. <laughs> <I'm breathing. sighs> Jeez, this felt like a long three and a half miles. <laughs> I think just uh, warming up into it maybe. Anyway, you can finally now see down into Elgol, just a little fishing village here on the coast. Tiny little place actually. <laughs> it's going to be nice to have a little look and uh, press on into the day. Elgol is a scattered hamlet sitting on the shores of Loch Skalveg. It is often frequented by visitors looking for boat rides across the myriad of locks and around the peninsula. It was a picturesque place, peaceful and somehow lost to modern day time. The route didn't go down to the harbour, but instead stayed high on the cliffs, passing a small village shop en route. <laughs> this was unplanned. Uh, basically, I decided to sit here for 40 minutes and wait for the shop to open so I can get a coffee. Mm. It's been really nice just sitting in the sunshine and uh, as you can see, we have company. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically gonna press on um, 
along the way where we're going to see some interesting historical sites which I'm looking forward to talking about even though I find them quite like eerie and atmospheric um, but then I think in the sunshine everywhere's going to look lovely so fingers crossed we can get the message but not get haunted <laughs> cheers to that <laughs> you like that? did you like that? <laughs> you're a good boy yeah It's like a little oasis, this patch of forest. The birds and the wildflowers and the greenery and the sunshine. Very nice. Not a bad place to live. Right here in the cliff top, in the woods. <laughs> Passing through the fragmented settlement of Glasna Kelly, I noticed the odd sign that life here really is on the edge, exposed to the seasons and merciless winds. I just love this view. And the bay and the peaks that shadow it. Just so much colour. We have some semi-highland coos on the path. They're so cute. Look at them. They're so fluffy. Hello. Can I have a cuddle? <laughs> Please. It's today the day I finally befriend a coo. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Look at him! This is so cool! They really don't seem to mind me here. I'm just gonna whip around here, okay coo? to walk away. Coos are just like mammoths and I love mammoths and they're also like yaks and I love yaks and just generally fluffy things I love them all. Look at this view. Oh my life. It's amazing. <laughs> well, I mentioned earlier that there's some significant historical sites on this stretch of the walk and basically there's a lot of croft houses and homes that have been abandoned during the highland clearances which were a bloody and heartbreaking season for the highlands and now it's just left these homes to wildlife to the sheep just piles of stones and you can imagine communities thriving out here in the glens and on the coast and then basically lords and landlords and ministers come and say you can't be here anymore it's uh it's, it's horrendous just being displaced like that everything you know your entire ancestry and lineage destroyed burnt so these are the places we're going to be walking through today and i do expect it to be quite moving and atmospheric and i do want to take my time and honor the people that once lived here and give their story a chance to be told through this film as well I was already feeling moved by the story of the lands I had travelled through so far. There was so much history all around, from Iron Age hill forts to coves once home to fishing communities. 
The land felt wild and free, but its people had been suppressed in a way that felt unfinished, with their souls left roaming the mountains and moors. I'll tell you, it is hot today. Another sweaty one. I was uh, actually draining my energy quite a bit today. Um, but yeah, it's quite nice knowing it's a shorter day, if that makes sense. Anyway, we stretch along the road and we'll see where we go from there. I haven't looked at a map any further. Okie dokie, leaving the road for a path. Shocking. <laughs> uh, help. <laughs> there I was like, oh great, we're gonna get the shade of the trees. Uh, no, they're all chopped down. Got the earphones in, just need a bit of energy boost. Time to get some music on. Ooh, feeling the heat. <laughs> Climbing up onto the hill, I passed the ruins of Kepoch yet another victim of the Highland Clearances, with 44 families forcibly evicted in 1852. Once again, a spectacular landscape to be walking into. It's so stunning. Dropping down into the trees now. I'm pretty sure we'll be hooking up the road to Torin. These were the Red Hills, and I was now on the other side of Blapienen, having shifted from its western flanks to the east. Everything about the scene felt alpine and magical, with pine trees and bilberry, songbirds and burns. It was simply perfect. sunshine this glen is baking <laughs> but I can imagine in bad weather it's really exposed like the wind is just blowing through proper like wind gap being funneled by the mountains still I'm not complaining at all <laughs> and now over the crossing of Loch Slapin in. I don't know how to say that gallically, but this is it, with the tide out. <laughs> Inspired by the sheep, I paused for a while to say goodbye to the Kulins, having now thoroughly emerged out the other side. They began as strangers, and we parted as friends. I couldn't wait until I returned to explore more of the area. Then it was onwards, along the road to Torrin, home to an outdoor centre and perhaps more importantly, a cafe. Any guesses where I was headed for? I made it to the cafe, got myself a brew and some apple cake. This good life on the sky train. Well, I've been sat here for ages. I've had two cups of tea, my cake, and I'm just trying to get my mojo up for walking on. <laughs> I feel like I've just slumped a little bit. Um, yeah, I've been looking at the map and reading the guidebook, um, just looking at where I could possibly stop tonight. Um, there are options, but they're all going to be around abandoned villages. How does that sound to you? Some of you will say, exciting. I am not one of those people, folks. <laughs> so yeah, just um, just getting grounded. And then I think it's time to walk, really. It's also just super nice being sat in the sunshine. Can I just put that out there? It's, it's quite nice not walking for a little bit. I've been airing my feet. And uh, yeah, happy human. 
Also, it might be worth mentioning, there hasn't been any service so far today and most of yesterday. So for my comms, I've been using this, which is a Zolio device. Um, essentially, it's a satellite device. It's got an SOS function, um, but also a messaging fun function using the Iridium satellite connection. So it connects via Bluetooth to my phone and I've been using it to send messages like let my partner know last night that I'm at camp and all that jazz. So. Yeah, it's been kind of helpful. Just sending a few messages, making sure everyone knows that I'm A-OK. -okay. <laughs> My legs hurt now, I'm not gonna lie. I sat there for an hour. Getting moving was quite difficult. Um, I've rehydrated though, so I think that's gonna kick in and give me a hand, but I've just got a bit stiff. <laughs> um, anyway, it's four o'clock and we're on our way. And I've pulled back my expectations for this afternoon. I'm gonna get out of the village, try and get a mile or so under the belt, and then, uh, yeah, find a campsite. Ah, this is the quarry. Limestone and marble quarry. So both limestone and marble have been quarried here for many centuries now. A bit further on in tomorrow's journey, we'll see the remains of the railway line that was constructed to basically bring the rocks of raw materials across to Broadford. I find it all very exciting. You know, this is human um, geography. This is, this is a landscape in action. This is how people make a living and thrive out here. So yeah, whilst there's a massive hole in the earth, it also has a story to tell. Ducker! <laughs> <laughs> We're just coming up to the junction point where we turn off south. Um, what's really interesting here is if we continued on along this road for two and a half kilometers, we would reach the location we're going to rejoin it tomorrow. So this road goes to Broadford essentially. Um, and we're doing a sort of backward C shape around a headland to see some of the abandoned settlements. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be good to get off the tarmac and back out into the hills, I think. I'm really, really enjoying the coastal stuff. It's just so beautiful in this uh, lovely, lovely weather. Here we go. So Broadford that way, and we're turning off to the right. Let's do it. And what we can see is there is a sign as well. And these are pretty, pretty accurate, thanks to Scottish geniuses. Susanish is the first abandoned village, three and a half miles, and Buareg, <laughs> um, five miles. And that's where I'm initially planning to go to. I think instead I'm going to end up somewhere around here. And we've been there already. <laughs> Another very peaceful bay. It's a race, this hike. So the guy with the husky dog is caught up and I know he took a break out of the heat of the day and I took a break in the cafe and now we're back on 100, 200 meter distance again. <laughs> it's just funny how it works out. Anyway, I think I've got my eyes set on a patch of woodland that I might try and camp at. <sighs> so let's keep pressing on. It's quite hot, just saying. That is a very satisfying track, <laughs> contouring the whole way. Very nice. And the cliffs now stretching out in front of us. So the first abandoned settlement is just over there on that peninsula. <sighs> and I think this inlet is where I'm gonna stop, provided it proves satisfactory. This forested patch, this little coombe as we call it down in Somerset, is where I was looking to stop. Um, <laughs> it's just a bit more dense than I expected. That's quite impenetrable. My plan B is still another three, four kilometers away. <sighs> right, if that's the case, which it is the case, because look at me, I'm still walking. <laughs> I'm gonna really try and take this nice and steady. I'm feeling the heat, like I feel it in my body. I don't feel super well. Um, so yeah, just gonna Go into self-preservation mode a little bit, I think. 
open 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 up okay that's water could camp there interesting let's take a closer look at this little picture so this is the site I actually think I am going to stay here like why push on when I found something that works <clears throat> I'm just going to check a little bit further <laughs> every single day is the same I don't know what I am doing it's just there we've walked all the way around here today you know truthfully this is one of my concerns is that if i keep pressing on i'm not going to find water because this is another example of a burn that's dried up and i have passed a good five or six along the way here that i potentially could have camped at if they were full but they're not like this one is substantial and i think it's worth trusting that so let's do it that was meant to be a high five <laughs> myself high five this is our camp. Let's get set up. Oh, <clears throat> feel like I can't escape the heat, the sun, man. I don't know if it's me, and I've just got too hot and unprotected enough, but I'm so hot. <laughs> I'm trying to drink and drink and drink, but it's not doing the job. I think just having a little sploosh about in the water is going to help. <sighs> I feel like I don't have any energy to do anything. I just want to like sleep. <laughs> Ugh. Well, I just washed my feet in the river and got slapped around the foot by a fish. It nuzzled under my foot. It was an exceptionally unexpected experience. Um, and I found fossils, which was incredible and is incredible, um, just here in this waterfall. And it really made me want to wander all the way up and all the way down and find all the fossils. But I'm going to be restricted with myself um, and get on food. So tonight I have a fire pot meal. This actually went off in 2021. So let's see how we go. Uh, dal and rice with spinach. So here, yeah. grubs up kids. Actually, no, in truth, I need to work out how I'm gonna cook. Um, the ground underfoot is wet, but the shrubbage on top is not, it's really dry. So I wanna put my stove on something. That evening, after whipping up a feast, I clambered up the nearby hill to enjoy the sunset. It was a magical way to welcome my final night on the trail, and I felt a great sense of calm within the lands through which I had travelled. Good morning everybody and welcome to the final day on the Sky Trail. The sun is coming up, I've just had some porridge, also on the coffee, life is good right now. I had a good night's sleep and uh, well I say that, it was alright. Um, <laughs> and yeah, ready for this final push um, along the coast and then cutting inland to Broadford. Coffee, dee 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 dee, ooh coffee, coffee, dee 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 dee. I'm going to leave these fossils on the bridge so other people can enjoy them. Okay. Hi, campsite. Really feeling chilled this morning. And actually, it was a bit of a push getting packed up, but. 10 past seven, we're on our way. And here we have Susanesh, which is uh, <clears throat> one of the deserted villages. I was literally right next to it, actually. <laughs> and listen to this. It's very, um, very sad to read in the guidebook. It goes, uh, 
the emptying of Susnish. Susnish was forcibly emptied of his tenants as part of the Highland Clearances in 1853. It gained notoriety because of the witness testimony of a geologist who was visiting the area at the time. He recalled, a strange railing sound reached my ears. I could see a long and motley procession winding along the road that led north from Susnish. There were old men and women too feeble to walk who were placed in carts. The younger members of the community on foot were carrying their bundles of clothes while the children with looks of alarm walked alongside. A cry of grief went up to heaven, a long plaintive wail like a funeral coronach was resumed. The sound echoed through the wide valley of Strath in one prolonged note of desolation. Pretty sad, isn't it really? Forcibly evicted from your homes, burnt down. <sighs> yeah, very sad. It was proving to be a thought-provoking morning's hike, and I felt grateful to be able to walk as I was, with very few worries, stresses, or anxieties. Sunshine! Ah, oh, that feels good. <laughs> Rounding the hillside, rather amazingly, my hiking friend and his spirit dog appeared. This was to be the last time I would see them, as I forced myself to slow down and savour my final day on the trail. Since the hike, I have found myself missing them, as though they represented the freedom and beauty of life on the trail. It really is a way of life that I treasure. Okay, well, whilst it's not exactly a raging torrent, this is the waterfall I was going to camp by, and there's ample location to stop here, whether up there or right there. <laughs> I can't even film the water. You can probably just about hear it. It's a trickle. But that definitely would have worked. That was my last option really for last night. And it feels okay, it's right in the bay. Um, yeah, didn't need to do that, did we? We had a very nice spot by the river. Let's check out the state of this then. My guidebook says at high tide it can be a little tricky getting around here, but it looks to be okay. Rounding the corner, I found myself entering the abandoned settlement of Bororaig, certainly the biggest en route. The story here was by now a familiar one. This place was once home to 120 people across 22 households, most of whom worked as crofters, agricultural labourers, farm servants, weavers, fishermen or house carpenters. It was certainly an eerie spot, and amongst the gusts of wind you could almost hear the voices of those who once lived and thrived here. After a solid look around, I swapped the ruins for a trail that turned sharply north, climbing up into the hills, alongside a bubbling alt. This is pretty much our final ascent for the day, just winding our way up into the hills. It felt pretty crazy that I was now onto the penultimate leg, to Broadford and the end of the trail. And as I passed Loch Lornacan and moved through the hills, I felt light in spirit, accompanied not only by my own shadow, but all of those who had roamed the lands before. Well folks, this feels a bit premature because I've just stopped. But I was just thinking, you know, I'm walking down this track now, another kilometre, and then I join the road and then boom, I'm into Broadford. And obviously the trail officially ends in Broadford, but we were dropped off on the road and walked out in the hills at the beginning of this hike. And I just feel like the road is what signals the end of my journey, more so than Broadford. Like, why should a conurbation get the say when nature has been the one telling the story for the last six days? Like, that feels very, very important to me. And so I just took off my pack and sat down. And I'm just reflecting on how much of an incredible journey this has been. Like, I have faced some fears on this trail. Like, I've done some wild camping. The wild camping doesn't come easy. But what I have found is, particularly in the sunshine, Coming to a place like this with big mountains and wide open views is what inspires me to push through the fear. And I think that's my overall message from this trail is sometimes we have to do things that scare us. 
but it's much easier to do things that scare us if there's a worthwhile point on the other side to find the other side of fear and for me pushing through the other side of the fear of wild camping has meant I can access phenomenal massive majestic landscapes like this the jagged peaks and the endless glens and the eagles in the sky and the seals in the water like it has just taken my breath away time and time and time again and it's just left me so happy I feel absolutely elated you can probably tell I am buzzing <laughs> I'm also dreading that post trail feeling that like sinking feeling in your stomach that you know it's over and the only really consolidation to that is knowing that these memories will last a lifetime and you guys have been able to experience this with me as well so whether you come and do the sky trail or visit sky or the outer hebrides or whatever somewhere in scotland or whether you go and do your own journey somewhere more local to you it doesn't really matter what matters is our intention what matters is what we're pushing through to get there is about connecting with nature and allowing the natural world to carry you through that journey of personal growth because every single time i come out here I feel just molded a little bit more into a better human that's a space for self-reflection it just I don't know it's something so amazing about it and modern day life keeps us separate from nature in so many ways and I think it's very very important to be intentional about coming outside breathing deep and being surrounded by landscapes that inspire awe and wonder and the sky trail has certainly done that for me so guys, I really do hope that this has inspired you to get outside, wherever that may be. Before you do so, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and please check out my channel. I have so many different trails on there now from all over the world, films that you can dive into on a rainy day when you don't want to get outside. <laughs> um, but the more you can share this, this film and any of my films, the more you can help share that message that getting out into nature is really beneficial for our mental and physical health and help inspire and empower other people to do that through their own obstacles, whether mental health, physical pain or something else entirely. We all have struggles, but nature is always available. So get up, get out and spend more time in the wild. Thank you for watching folks. Enjoy those adventures wherever they may be. And until next time, Stay wild! I see you soon! Bye! <laughs> These films always end so weird, I never know how to like sign off. It's just bye! Like what was that? I don't know. The rest of the trail proved to be straightforward and epic all at once. I made my way down off the hills along the marble line, which was in operation from 1907 until 1912. This rail line transported highly prized marble that was quarried in the area down to Broadford, where it was shipped away to faraway lands. The pathside was littered with slag heaps and old engineering works, thankfully now well protected, with the area being designated as a site of special scientific interest for its geology. Passing through a gate, I turned to wave one last goodbye to the Kulin Mountains, before following a well-made track through farmland and then down through the Broadford community woodlands until finally I hit tarmac. My heart was in my mouth in anticipation for the end of the way and soon trail signs were replaced with road speed limits trees with lampposts and cliffs with houses. It was by no means an urban walk, but I certainly wasn't in the hills anymore. Then ahead were the glistening waters of Broadford Bay, looking north out over to the Crowlin Islands, Scalpe and Torridon. This was where my Sky Trail adventure officially finished. And, just like the random red phone box at the beginning, there was no parade or fanfare, just wide open skies and ancient waters and lands. A resilient place, alive and breathing, and timeless in its beauty.